being here. Uh, certainly he's a hero of mine, and I appreciate uh, the work you've done uh, uh, talking about him as well. But I want to get to what I see a very important subject here. I'm, I'm troubled by all the stories uh, that we've heard of what happens to consumer financial information when it gets into the wrong hands and how aggressive uh, people are of trying to get this information. Our government should be held to the highest standard when it comes to protecting personal information it holds on the American people. On October 15th, the CFPB released its final rule to expand data collection under Regulation C, the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, or HMDA. Uh, the final rule requires covered banks and credit unions to, to collect 48 unique data fields on each mortgage loan they make. This is more than double the number of data fields covered lenders are currently required to collect. Some of the new fields include uh, applicant or borrower age, credit score, automated underwriting system information, unique loan identifier, property value, application channel, points and fees, borrower paid origination charges, discount points, lender credits, loan term, prepayment penalty, non-amortizing loan features, interest rate, and loan originator identifier. I think we can all agree that this is a lot of information. And while some of this information is not directly related to the borrower or terms of the loan, this data can still be revealing. I understand regulators and the public uh, make use of this data, but I'm also concerned that it could pose privacy risks for homeowners. Speaker Gingrich, if I can direct this first question to you, I think we all remember the Office of Personal Management data breach, and I think we've heard some testimony today about how the CFPB's data security controls may be inadequate. In light of the incidents like OPM and others within the government, how can we assure the American people that their personal information is safe? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you can't. Second, you reminded me, I got the, one of the letters of among 21 million people that said my data had been breached, and I said, gee, if you want to do something, call this number. I couldn't imagine anything useful. I mean, what, what are they going to do? Say, we don't know exactly who breached it, we don't know exactly where it is, and we don't know exactly how it'll be used. I mean, it's just, it's nonsense. Yeah. The fact that you can live through this, you can watch this scale of failure, and then have some other bureaucrat sublimely tell you, oh, we are safe. They don't, my, my first point is they don't know. If, if you are not offline, yeah. you are by definition potentially hackable. And the government, this is a major crisis for the whole government. This is not something that I, I worked with John McCain, the chairman of the Armed Services Committee in the Senate, who's very worried that we are not able to innovate rapidly enough inside our bureaucracies to keep up with the private sector evolution worldwide. And it's always worldwide. It's Estonians, it's Romanians, it's Russians, it's, it's Israelis. It, and so we need to understand how the threat. I think that is a significant thing, and I would encourage the committee to get people from places like Carnegie Mellon and MIT. Let, let's meet everybody's concern about the level of technical expertise, and I think you'll find that they will tell you, you should be afraid, you should not be reassured. I believe you're right. I just had a, a briefing this morning with uh, Department of Energy and uh, cybersecurity and some real concerns, real threats, uh, real experts uh, who are frightened, uh, having nightmares they talked about of, uh, of what could happen and, and we see this just as widespread. I'm gonna ask a question, uh, just a yes or no question. Speaker Gingrich, uh, Dr. Calabria and, and uh, Mr. Abernathy, the CFPB's final rule did not explicitly state which of this new data would be made publicly available. It seems to me a study on the privacy risks and the opportunity for public comment would be appropriate, just as Speaker Gingrich was talking about. Uh, Speaker, I think you've already answered. Uh, would you agree that this is a good position? I think you say yes. Yes. Mr. Abernathy? I agree, Congressman. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Uh, yes. Um, let me jump back and uh, focus uh, to, to the doctor and to Mr. Abernathy. Do you have any thoughts on why the CFPB chose to go well beyond the new reporting requirements in Section 1094 of Dodd-Frank? The CFPB loves to say they are data-driven in their policy, but uh, doesn't the increased reporting of this data raise more privacy issues? That's one of the serious concerns. When you look at the more than two dozen additional data segments that the Bureau asked for, and yet there really is inadequate discussion as to why they need the, these data, what they would do with it. We need that kind of public debate before they do the rule rather than afterwards. I agree. Doctor. Uh, and I, I would certainly agree with that. Let me say even before this, uh, from what was publicly available for Humda, you could link to courthouse records and identify individuals with that data, even with the pre-existing databases. Yeah, I, I only have a couple seconds left. This feels like such an overreach at such a risky time. Uh, I think it's absolutely the wrong direction to go for CFPB to be doing this, and we need to do more to make sure it doesn't happen. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes.